No, man, I'm telling you what it says. It says, come here. It says, come to this exact location, but it's just a silly little old store. Like, what do I need this store for? Oh, hey, guys. Hey, Steve, let me call you back. Okay, sorry about that. Hey, guys, it's me, Noah. That was just Big Steve helping me out with this super cool map. Want to see? Here, wham! Yeah, it, it says on here, to whoever may come upon this map, adventure awaits you. There's never been such a time as this for you to pack up everything and go, but be warned, it's not going to be easy. Trials are ahead, but it will all be worth it in the end. Anyway, the map gave me specific starting locations to come right here to this store, and I guess maybe it wants me to buy the supplies that are listed right here. Let's check it out. Come on. All right, all right, so I'm going to need a fresh pair of hiking boots. Okay, all right, huh. Hmm, let's see. There! Got them! Right there. New hiking boots. Awesome. Ma'am, could I get these hiking boots, please? One second! One second! Okay, I guess she's busy right now. Anyway, moving on. Next, I'm going to need a backpack. Huh, let's see. Backpack. Backpack. It's right there. Cool. Got it. Backpack. Awesome. Well, when she's done, I'll get her to grab that for me, too. All right, and then I've got to get a water bottle and a first aid kit, but those should be easy to find. The next big thing is the climbing hook. Man, I really hope that they have this climbing hook. Let me ask. Ma'am, is there any way that you have the X74 Climber 3000? No, sorry, buddy. I just sold my last one last week. Okay, well, thank you anyway. Guys, this is not good. I, I have all my items, everything I need to go on this journey, but I don't have the climbing hook. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do without this climbing hook? The map said that I need this climbing hook, not any other climbing hook, but this climbing hook, this is not good. This is not, I'm gonna freak out guys. This is not good, this is not, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do, this is not good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to call Big Steve, M maybe he knows what to do. But I don't wanna bother him again. No, but Big Steve always says, if we need him, call him. So that's what I'm gonna do, hold on. Hello? Big Steve? What's the matter? Hey man, dude, I'm freaking out right now, bro. Listen, the, the, the map said to get the certain climbing hook that we needed and, and they don't have it. And I've got every other supply, man. Every supply that I could possibly need. I've got the water bottle, I've got the first aid kit, but I don't have the climbing hook. Dude, I don't know what I'm gonna do without the climbing hook. Big Steve, you gotta help me, man. I'm freaking out. Whoa, Noah, buddy, slow down, slow down. Let's use those words, buddy. Is there like something you can use in its place of the special climbing hooky thingy? Big Steve, I checked, maybe like a rope or something, but, but they didn't have it, Big Steve, they didn't have it. I'm really upset, Big Steve, because I really wanna go on this adventure, man. I really, really wanna go on this adventure, and now I can't. No, buddy, hey. It's gonna be okay. What do you mean it's gonna be okay? I just told you it's not. I don't have all the gear I need. Yeah, Noah, it's gonna be okay. Big Steve, you keep saying it's okay when clearly I'm telling you it's not okay, man. Noah, buddy, I hear you, but guess what? It's gonna be okay. Here you go again with the it's gonna be okay. No, it's not, bro. My life is in shambles and you're over here saying that it's gonna be okay. What's up with that, man? It's gonna be okay. All right, fine. If it's gonna be okay, then you tell me. How's it gonna be okay? Explain to me, Big Steve, how it's going to be okay that my life is in shambles. Because, Noah, Ephesians 1. What, Big Steve? I don't even know what you're talking about, man. What is a P, a P? A f a f what? Ephesians 1 or Ephesians chapter 1 means the very first chapter in the book of Ephesians, which is a book in the Bible. So Ephesians 1 is how I know you're going to be okay, bro. All right, bro. Well, I'm going to need you to do a lot more explaining because right now I don't have the warm and fuzzies. I don't. Well, man, the warm and fuzzies are in aisle 3, which is right behind you. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Of course, I have a story about Ephesians 1. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, man. I'm ready for a story if it's going to help the situation, but we got to make it quick because I've got to get going on this adventure. Okay, okay. Story's fast. Quick setup. You know Paul. Yeah, bro. Of course. Paul. Paul from the ice cream stand. Man, dude, he always gives me like an extra scoop, but he still charges me the extra 27 cents for the extra scoop, but he always gives it to me, you know, because he's my guy, Paul. Yeah. No, not Paul the ice cream guy, and I know what you're gonna ask Nesk. Not Paul the music guy, although he does sound really cool, but Paul from the Bible, formerly known as Saul, but Paul who wrote a ton of the Bible. 
Oh, yeah, Paul. Okay, yeah, no, I totally know that, Paul. Yeah. Okay, Noah, well, just in case if you didn't know who that Paul was, well, before he was Paul, as I said, he was Saul, and he had an encounter with God, and it was such an intense encounter that God actually changed his name from Saul to Paul. And he basically said, Paul, you are going to help me run my ministries. I'm going to send you out, do all the cool stuff that it takes to bring people to know who Jesus is, to get a relationship with Jesus. So part of the duties that God had told Paul to do was to really adopt this church in Ephesus. Ephesus was a town. The people who lived there were called the Ephesians. And the book of Ephesians is actually a letter from Paul to these guys. And basically, they had a church set up in Ephesus. And they were doing some stuff that really wasn't making God too happy. So Paul wrote this letter and it was like, hey guys, these things don't really make God happy. Plus, if you're doing them, you're probably not going to have that great of a life. And I and Jesus and God and all of us want you to have an amazing life. Okay, bro. That sounds so legit. So what you're about to tell me is from that letter, right? Yeah, exactly, bro. The stuff that I'm going to tell you right now comes directly from that letter. Okay, cool. So what is it, man? Yeah, bro. So I know that everything is going to be awesome and work out because in Ephesians 1, in that letter, God used Paul to tell them that God has a plan and a direction for their life. Yeah, bro. But he was telling Paul that he had a plan for Paul, not Noah, that he had a plan for Noah. Well, that's where you're wrong, man. So this letter was originally written to the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. But what God was telling Paul was you need to tell everybody, whether they were Jewish or Gentile. And, and Gentile, that was, that was kind of the term for a Christian back then because the term Christian hadn't been made up yet. So there was Jewish people and non-Jewish people. The non-Jewish people were, of course, the Gentiles. So God gave words to Paul to tell everybody, Jewish or Gentile, everybody, that before they were even born, Noah, before you even found that map, before you followed the map to that weird looking, but still kind of cool looking store, God had a plan. He had a plan for your life before you were born. So when you look around that store and you might not have found everything that you need, God already had a plan, and he already knew that was going to happen. Wait a minute, Big Steve. There are 8 billion people in this world, and you're telling me that God had a plan for each of us before we were born, like every single one of us. Bro, that's exactly what I'm saying. Now you're catching on. God had some detailed plan for our life and how it was going to work out and what we were going to do and how we are going to get out of all the bad situations that we were in? Big Steve, that is amazing. God must be so smart. God has a plan for me. Me. God has a plan for me. You know, I've messed up so much in my life and God still loves me and has a plan for me. That's incredible. God is so good. I know, bro. Like, that's crazy to think about and hard for me to get my head wrapped around because sometimes like, I can't even remember phone numbers that I have to call. But God, before everyone, everyone on the entire earth was born, he had a plan set aside for everyone. But it actually goes a step further than that. God doesn't only have a plan for you. He also chose you. He made the decision that with the billions of people on this earth, he made the decision to choose each and every one of them if they want to choose him back. So what's crazy is before you were born, God had a plan for you. Before you were born, God chose you. And if God did all of that before you were born, he wouldn't bring you all the way to where you're standing right now and not have a plan for when there's no silly hook available that this mystic map says. So he brought you all the way to the spot that you're at, Noah, to keep bringing you further, to keep protecting you, and to keep making a way for you, Noah. So I believe that God is gonna either provide another hook or he's going to provide you the ability to figure out how to do this without the hook. This is amazing. God has a plan for me. God has a... 
Hey, everybody, God has a plan for me. Keep it down, please. This is my store. Sorry, lady. Sorry. Jeez, man, this is so exciting. Yeah, man, I'm so happy that you're so excited. And, you know, don't worry about her. You can be a witness to her a little bit later. But what's your next step right now? Well, Big Steve, I, I guess my next step is to buy everything, pack it up into this book sack, put it on my back, and get going. Now that you've told me that God is on my side and that he has a plan for me, I fully trust that he's in control. And, bro, I feel brave enough to go out and face anything that comes my way. Desert storms, sand rocks and desert stuff maybe like a big desert glacier there's no such thing as a desert glacier yeah whatever man desert glaciers whatever i i'm just ready to go and face everything god has a plan for me through everything even when i can't see it he knows what my next step is yeah bro that's so true well all right guys i guess it's time to get going but i want you to remember something just like god has a plan for me he has a plan for you too and no matter what situation you're in, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, God is always on your side and he wants what's best for you. And his plan is so good. So just trust him and know God's on your side and he has a plan for your life. So anyway, I think it's time for the big idea. Big Steve. Take it away! All right, guys, you guys get on your feet. Noah's got a lot of stuff that he's gotta buy for the rest of his trip. But for right now, me and you, we're on our feet because it is time for the big idea. And that big idea is God has a special plan for us, for me, for you, for Noah, for all of our friends, for all of our family. God has a special plan for us. So I already know you're standing, I already know you're up, and you are ready to say that big idea on the count of three. One, two, three. God has a special plan for us. Man, that's so excited, and I cannot wait to see the rest of the journey that Noah's on. But for right now, that's all the time we got. Catch you later.